got rid of that balloon. Hey everybody! How's everyone doing? Hello, hello, hello! Oh my goodness! <sighs> Yay balloons! No, this balloon's been driving me nuts because I Romy tied it to my chair. And every time I sit down to do my uh, periscopes, it's in the way. Okay, so how's everyone doing today? Good? It's Tuesday. I don't know about you, but that has me excited. Sorry, I'm writing something down really quick. I'm very happy that it's Tuesday. Because frankly, Monday was a hard day. I had so much work to do. And I am happy to not uh, have that much work to do today. Although, that's only because I already did it all. I have been up since um, the butt crack of stupid. And I have been working all day on various projects. I had to write a coach's bio for um, for somebody um, for Iris' secret project. I had to, um, oh my God, I had so much to do. I had to uh, price out some equipment and things. I took up most of my day, email a bunch of people. Oh, it's just nonstop. Then, uh, when all of that was said and done, I started the second half of my day, just after noon, uh, I started working on the cruise stuff because I, I, Derek gave me a list of about, I don't know, 26 people roughly that had yet to pay their final uh, installment for their cruise. And so I've been uh, busy, busy, busy calling all those people trying to get their payments scheduled to be made because the final payment's due on, um, on uh, the 15th. Thank you, uh, Vivi's First Lady. I'm glad you think I'm looking so well. I am getting, um, I don't know that I'm saying, I would say I'm getting a lot of sleep. I would say I'm getting some sleep. I've been going to bed about midnight, but I've been waking up every day about anywhere between 6 and 8 a.m. is when I've been waking up. And um, so I get up very, very early, Whew. And, which is not at all like me. I used to sleep until almost noon most days, so it's very different um, getting up so much earlier. Uh Although we did kick Romy out of the bed recently, so I have been sleeping better, that's true. Um, I think it's the lack of stress, really, in my life that has me looking a little bit healthier. Um, I'm just not as stressed out as, I, as much as I was a few weeks ago, so I think that certainly has helped. Um, okay, so I did, I worked a bunch today on the cruises. I was calling people and leaving messages for people. Um, if I called you today, please fucking call me back. <laughs> If you haven't, please please do. <laughs> it would cer certainly make my um, life easier to get these all dealt with um, sooner rather than later. Would you ever work nights again? Um, you know, I would. I don't know that I would want to work. Uh, I, w I don't know that I would want to work to the hours that we worked before uh, because I didn't get home most days until like 1 30 in the morning and that really that was really hard because you went to work on one day and you came home the next day I didn't like that so much so um, maybe not I don't know we'll see I don't know that I'd want to work mornings either <sighs> it's very hard because they they both have sucky aspects getting up at the butt crack of beyond stupid would be very hard for me but um, working late is also a little challenging, so I don't know. Well, well, I don't know. I guess we'll find out when Derek and I get a new job what our hours will be. Uh, can you do a podcast from home? It's funny you should mention that. Um, today, actually, my computer arrived. I got a new uh, iMac that I ordered. I didn't even tell my wife. I just did it. Shh. She's going to be mad at me because uh, I keep spending money. And she's going to say, but you're unemployed. And I'm like, I know. Uh, that's what credit cards are for, right? No, I'm kidding. Uh, anywho, so I did buy a new um, iMac. And my, so now I have my mixer and I have my iMac. And um, I'm going to get, uh, as soon as I get my iMac set up, I, it's been in the box. It's here. I haven't even opened it because that's the kind of busy day I've had. But as soon as I get it opened up and set up, then I'm going to download some editing software and I'm going to get to work. Um, so maybe, 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 maybe I can podcast from home. I know Derek has been doing a little bit of that. And I, yes, I know there are easy ways to do it that don't require a new mixer and, um, uh, and a new computer and all those things. But I wanted to have a very specific audio set up if I'm going to do this. So I, that's what I'm doing. I also bought myself a really nice new mic. Oh my goodness. I'm very excited about that. That actually might be the thing I'm the most excited about because it is, <sighs> It's beautiful. It's a beautiful mic, and it's going to be amazing. 
Anywho, so uh, I, I just have to get the room. My, my old studio room that I have um, is a mess right now. And in order to set up my setup, I'm actually going to have to put in, like, a desk in there to put all the equipment on. So I actually have to go up there and, like, completely gut that room, clean it, reorganize it, and um, make it work. Couldn't Jeff get it working with your old Mac? Uh, here's the problem, Tim, with that. My daughter, Romy, has taken over our old iMac, and uh, the one that I'm actually sitting in front of right now, uh, and she has already told me that she would like for me to move the old iMac up into her room so that uh, she can have her own computer. So I'm like, no, no, honey bunny, you don't get your own computer. <laughs> Because that sounds like trouble. And by the way, computers are very expensive. And she's like, but you can buy me one. I'm like, no, no, I can't. Uh, so not at least not until I have a job. So anyway, so she wants, uh, she does want, um, she does want her own computer. Lady, for Vivi's first lady wants to know what kind of tripod she should get for her uh, periscoping. You know what? Uh, email me and I will send you a link to the kind that I think you should get. Um, it's different than the one I got because I kind of jerry-rigged mine before I found one that I actually liked. Um, but there are a couple different kinds you can get depending on what kind of uh, device you're using to record it, whether it's an iPad or an iPhone. Um, so email me Romaine Patterson at Gmail and I will send you, I'll send you a link and then maybe you can find something that will work for you. Um, I do know that they have kind of a cheap one. Um, if you want, uh, like, like a really cheap one, they have one at Target for like $29 that kind of plugs where the lightning cable goes in the bottom of your iPhone. And it's just a little cheap plastic one, but it would it would serve the purpose and it's super cheap. So that's something. Um, but there are better ones, and I can um, I can help you with that if you want. Uh, okay, so I wanted to update everybody on the uh, cut a hole in a dildo. It makes a good tripod. No, why would you do that to a dildo? That's horrible. What is wrong with you, ice blended mocha? You're a mess. Okay. I wanted to update you on um, where we are with the with the uh, postcards because you know we've been sending postcards. You guys have been sending postcards like crazy people, and we are we've got a lot of the states, but we are still missing twelve states. We're missing twelve of them. So if any of you live in any of these locations, these are the states we still need postcards from in our collection of fifty states postcards. Idaho. We do not have a postcard from Idaho yet. Or North Dakota. Or Minnesota. What is that? Indiana. We don't have one from you. We don't have one from Arkansas. We don't have one from Louisiana yet, which I find kind of shocking. Uh, we don't have one from Alabama yet. I don't know why. Maybe I don't have any friends in Alabama. We don't have one from North Carolina. We don't have one from West Virginia. We don't have one from Rhode Island. We don't have one from Maine or Delaware. So if you are in one of those areas or visiting one of those areas, you can send us a postcard from there. Then we will be closer to our 50 states, uh, and we will love that. I tried to find one for Indiana on lunch today, but failed. I have heard that finding postcards is not as easy as I thought it would be. That's interesting. I didn't know that it was so hard to find postcards. But my friend Norma said she had to go to like five places before she found one. So, oops. Okay, so, uh, Kentucky. I believe we have one from Kentucky. Let me double check. Oh, you know what? We don't have one from Kentucky. I don't know how I missed that one when I was writing down my list. So it's 13. Thank you for pointing that out, Kentucky. We don't have you yet. Okay. Someone said they found them at Walmart of all places. Weird. Okay, so uh, speaking of Norma, though, I wanted to talk about Norma because I didn't get a chance to talk about um, her visit. You know, Norma was out here um, over the weekend. She was here. She came out on, uh, I think she got here on Friday, Thursday or Friday. I can't even remember. All my days have literally just blurred together. And then she stayed through Sunday. 
Um, and it was really great. So I always love it when Norma comes to visit. She's a, she's a great friend and I always get to catch up on life and just kind of shoot the shit with her and kind of relax. It's kind of nice. Um, I felt really bad though one day because all the work that I had been doing, like finally caught up to me in the middle of the afternoon one day after we'd gone out to, um, like this nice lunch and I came home and I'm like, Norma, I just have to go take a nap. I'm so sorry. I think I'm dying. So I ran upstairs and I took like a 45 minute nap where I completely collapsed and pretty much uh, died on my bed. And she just kind of laughed at me because she could tell I was so fucking tired and I just was. Um, so anyway, one of the things though that we did is we had an adventure into the city on Saturday night. And she had, she had mentioned that she wanted to go to this John Early show. Um, I don't know forever ago because she always plans things way 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 in advance and she goes hey how do you feel about doing something in august and by the way it's february and i'm like i i mean i don't even know what's happening in august how am i supposed to plan that far ahead and she's like well just put it down on the calendar we're gonna go do this thing and i'm like okay i hope nothing changes between now and then i mean like i booked um i booked tickets to go on the um the Warrior Dash at the end of August that I'm not going to be able to go on to now because I'm going to Colorado. So, like, seriously, this kind of shit happens to me all the time. If you if I plan too far in advance, I usually fuck things up. So, anyway, it just so happened that it worked out that I was actually going to be in town and able to do this, this thing that we planned months ago. It's John Early Show. Now... She tells me about all kinds of podcasters and comedians and authors and people that she loves all the time. All the time. And I usually am like, okay, yeah, sure, sure. And it's like, I, I mean, I, I, I can't keep track of them all because she has so many that she loves. And typically, I will say, when Norma loves something, it usually is pretty good. And I should pay more attention than I do, but usually I have so much going on in my life <laughs> that I don't pay as much attention as I should. And I will be the first to admit it, I'm a horrible friend. But she wanted to go to this John Early thing, and I was like, okay. And I knew she told me who John Early was probably a million times. I'm not even kidding. She's probably told me 25 times. And I knew that it was something great, because I trust Norma. But I couldn't remember for the life of me what the fuck it was, and I'm too lazy to look up John Early on the internet uh, to figure it out. So, <laughs> uh, I, so she comes out, we go into the city, we get there really early, because I never know what it's like on the weekends getting into the city. The city traffic can either be hell or it can be really easy. So I'm like, let's go in early, worst case scenario, we stop, we get some dinner before the show, and then we go to the show. So we did. We got there super fucking early. And then we had like two and a half hours to kill before the show. So I'm like, all right, well, let's go get something to eat. Well, then Norma couldn't decide what she wanted. She wanted Chinese food, but she didn't know where exactly. And here's the thing. New York City is filled with a gazillion, bazillion restaurants. So there is literally Chinese food, three of restaurants on one block. Easily. In fact, where we were at, there were, I think, seven or eight on one block. Uh, between both sides of the street, and she couldn't decide where she wanted to go. So finally, she she got online. She spent like 10 minutes online trying to figure it out, and I'm like, I don't care. I'll eat anything, whatever. As long as it's food, I'll eat it. Finally, she finds this place called Hot Kitchen. This should be clue number one. So we go, into this, we go over to where Hot Kitchen is, and we're looking in the windows, and everybody in there is of Asian descent. And I said, well, if the Asian folks like it, it must be good. Because they're not going to eat shitty Americanized Chinese food. They're just not going to do that. So we go inside. We sit down. They bring out the menu. And the menu is not your American Chinese food menu. Just going to say. There's no General Chow's chicken on there and like cashew chicken or any of that. Any of the stuff you're used to, it's not there. I mean, there is like a small section and it's like... American Chinese food section on the back, on the very back in like a teeny tiny corner. But you can't order off that menu because then you're going to look like the American pussy that's come into the Chinese restaurant that's authentic Chinese food and you've ordered the pussy American food because you're a pussy. And I am not a pussy. So I'm like, oh yeah, fuck this shit. I got this. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm all over this. So they come, I place my order. I get something called a 
Spicy Chicken Village. Literally, that's what it's called. A spicy Chicken Village. Norma gets some spicy uh, chicken, or no, but shrimp dish. A spicy shrimp dish. Our food comes out. There are these big plates, and they give these plates, and they give you these little bowls of rice, and you get to put it all together, whatever. So we started by eating some of Norma's food because hers arrived about three minutes before mine did. And I took a bite of it, and it was like all these little red peppers with some shrimps. I took a bite out of it. Not a, not a red pepper, mind you. I just ate a shrimp. And I was like, oh, holy. And I said, how many peppers did that have next to it on the menu? And she's like, two. And I was thinking, oh, thank God, because mine only had one, and now I'm nervous. Oh, I was nervous. So after I ate about three of her shrimps, I think my face is going to melt off. And I'm like, I got to stop. I got to stop eating this, whatever this shit is, because mine's going to kill me before mine comes out. So my food comes out, and it's um, it's chicken, and it's got like a whole lot of jalapeno rings sliced up in it. And I don't generally like jalapeno, but, you know, whatever. I'm I'm a tough American. I can handle this shit. And, um, so I start eating my food and I eat, I don't know, let's say four bites. My face is, is melting. It is, it is, it is melting off. Okay. I don't know if it was jalapeno, but it sure looked like a jalapeno pepper. It was, it, my face was just, just know my face was melting off. This was the hottest. The spiciest Mexican, authentic Mexican food I've ever had in my whole fucking life. My face, I'm practically crying. I got, like, snot running down from my nose. I, And I'm looking at Norma, and I see Norma eating her spicy, spicy. And she's, she's trying to make the most of it, which is one of my favorite things about Norma. She's like, hmm... I'm tasting all these really interesting uh, flavors in my spicy shrimp. Oh, it's got some floral accents. And then she's figuring out what's causing her these floral accents in her palate. And then she realizes it's some kind of peppercorn that they're using. She's, like, completely breaking down her whole dish. Meanwhile, I'm over there going, <sighs> I'm dying. <laughs> and all of these Asian people who are in this restaurant, I am sure are watching us with great enthusiasm and joy as I am pretty much melting into a pool of stupidity over my dish. So a while goes by, we, we, make, we make it through as much of our dish as we can. And uh, finally it is, it is time to call it a day. So they bring us our, uh, our fortune cookies, which I gobbled up because I love fortune cookies. And mine said, um, accident is something that the root of invention or something like that. I'm like, oh yeah, I had an accident here. All right. Uh, it was hot. <laughs> I think, uh, this accident is why American Chinese food was invented because we Americans are pussies and we can't handle that shit. Yeah. So. That made me want to die. Just made me want to die. Just made me want to die. But I lived. And then we went to the John Early show. So it was at um, Joe's Pub, which happened to be about half a block from the um, Starbucks that I used to work in in New York City. The one that I used to talk about on the radio show all the time that was completely infested with mice. And, it, and as soon as it got dark, like a mouse circus rolled into the Starbucks and they were everywhere. So I was like, oh, I know this neighborhood. Oh, I love this neighborhood. I'm telling Norm all these funny things about the neighborhood. And so we go to Joe's Pub, and it's a very small room inside a much bigger building with all kinds of different staged areas. And the the stage is kind of set into one corner, and then it's kind of like a semicircle that kind of goes back in a couple different layers back. And maybe seats... 100, 150 people tops. It's a very small room. The stage is not big at all. And um, they have a keyboard player, a drummer, a, a guitarist on stage. And they are playing as loud as they can. And I'm telling you, it was so loud when I walked in, I was like, I felt like I was 90. I'm like, oh, what's with this loud rock and roll music? You couldn't hear yourself think because it was just such a tiny room and the sound guy had the sound up so high. 
So finally, we sit down and uh, we order our drinks, and I order some dessert to try to calm down the fire that is still in my mouth. And uh, I had some ice cream that helped. And so we're sitting there. You can't talk to one another in the 30 minutes you're waiting for the show to start because the music is just too loud. You can't hear shit. You couldn't even hear yourself. You could be screaming and not hear one another. And we were seated pretty much in what would be the equivalent of the second row. So like right on the stage. And so we've got very good view of everything, although there wasn't a bad view of anything in that room. It was such a tiny room. And John Early comes out on stage. Well, actually, first there was a really funny black comedian that came out on stage, got things warmed up, and then John Early comes out. Now, keep in mind, I don't know anything about John Early. I'm sure he's even been on the show, and I still don't know anything about John Early. Because, you know, I don't remember shit. So he comes out, he starts performing, he's a very funny comedian, and he sings, and he's got like this crazy uh, tenor voice where he can sing so high that you would pretty much be convinced he doesn't have balls at all. And he's kind of this, like, flaming homosexual of a guy. And uh, his, his, his comedy is really good. I have to say, I really did enjoy a lot of his comedy. Uh, his singing was a lot of fun. But he had this backup singer. Oh, my God. I think I'm in love. I do. I'm not even joking. She was like, if Ducky Doolittle... You know, Ducky Doolittle with her dark hair and her bangs and her big tits were to have a baby with my ex, Becca Jones, who, you know, is the hottest sex in my life. Those two were to have a baby and that baby was to become a grown adult woman. That is the woman I was looking at. And when she sang, I'm not kidding. Oh, I could not. I was oh, I was in love. I was like this. I love you. Oh, I love you so much. Oh, you're so wonderful. Oh, she's so great. Um, and so then that was pretty much me for the rest of the show. It's like John Early, who I just want to stare at her. Oh my God, she was amazing. She was so talented too. I mean, her voice was insanely good. Like oh, like wow. So, uh, we did the show. It was super fun. I had a great time. We drove home. Iris and Romy had gone out to a movie night, uh, with our friends out in the backyard again. So we all got home around like 1 30 in the morning. Uh, and the next day I had to go and pick up some pallets for Iris and her project. So that was Norma's visit, but it was super fun. We had a great time. Someone asked earlier how I met Norma. Um, she was a listener of the show and she decided uh, to take a spontaneous trip out to Gay Days Anaheim because she had heard us talking about it on the show. And she just decided to go at the last minute, like four days before uh, it happened. And she jumped on a plane and she showed up and then she told Derek, I just jumped on a plane like two days ago, decided to do this. And here I am. And so we, we, we thought that was such a crazy, wild, awesome thing to do that we started talking to her and I got to know her a little bit. And then um, we emailed back and forth for a long time. She would tell me funny little things that she thought I would like. And um, and so we got to know each other. And then eventually one day she asked me if I wanted to go to lunch when she was coming to New York City. And I was like, yeah, sure. Um, and then our friendship just started uh, to continue to grow. And we started doing lunch together like once a month or so. And um, I don't know. We just got to be good friends. So that's how I met Norma. Um, and by the way, we have mutual loves. Like we love Disney. Um, is she a trucker? No, she is not a trucker. She, she is a very smart lady who works in a cubicle. What? I know I took that off there because it was getting in my way. I'm sorry. Hey, She's mad at me over the balloon. I like the bear. Why don't we just tie it to this one right here? <laughs> See, I'm getting in trouble. You're bad. I'm a bad mom. It's true. Why are you growling at me? There you go. It's tied up. <sighs> Everyone saying hi, Romy. Hi. Is that all you have to say? Yes. Okay, that's all she has to say is hi. Yeah. <laughs> Don't give me a dirty look. It's rude. Why are you staring at me like that? I'm not bad. Tell everyone that you want your own computer. Do you think I should buy you one? Yeah. What kind? Bring that one to my room. You want the iMac in your room? Yes. yes. It's not happening. Yes, it is. No, it's not. I was Maybe you should ask them to buy you a computer. Maybe one of them will buy you one. Buy me a computer.
computer. Well, that's not the way to ask them. No one's going to do that. You have to do it like this. Will you please buy me a computer? You're not a kid. You don't know how to do it. Oh, I don't? You're not a kid. You're right. I'm not a kid. Okay, go. Uh, Romaine, you get a new one. She gets the old one. Listen, she's already taken over the old one. It might as well be hers. It's not. I just don't want to put it in her room because if I put it in her room, we'll never see her again because she'll spend all of her time up in her room. I never spent time in my room, so you should be happy. I'd rather her downstairs in the office spending time where we can kind of see her from. You don't see me. You spend time in the living room the whole time. You watch shows in the living room the whole entire time and go on your computer and then I... I think I just got ratted out by my kid. Are you saying I'm lazy? No. You're on your computer doing this. <laughs> work! Uh, yes, I am doing a lot of work, that's for sure. Being lazy. Go away. I can't deal with you anymore. Just get out of here. Go. Let me laugh for once. Let you laugh for once? You laugh all the time, you big dork. I know. All this talking, I barely had any of my um, beer. How is the Iris Project going? Um, I think it's going pretty well. I've made a lot of progress. Stop, Romy. We're working on the website right now. Um, hopefully that will be done in a couple of days. I wrote all the copy for it. Um, never put it in her room. See, I agree. Um, I'll never see her again. And then I think she'll get up in the middle of the night and watch YouTube videos when she's no, not supposed to. Um, Stop on me. Uh, any bitches snitch on you? Not yet, and I swear, if anyone does, I will block you. I will block you. I will block you. I, you will not. You will live barely to regret the day. Uh, so Derek mentioned you might have to move for the new gig. Well, I mean, maybe. Who knows? Um. So anywho, so yes, I'm working on our project. It is coming along. Um. I feel like by the end of the week we should have a pretty good idea of where things are at. And, um, I don't know, I feel like it's coming together pretty well. I mean, there's still a lot of decisions that have to be made, but I don't know. I think, I feel good about it. I'm a little exhausted, and I, I might have had dreams all night long about dimensions and how to mount things onto walls and whether they would fit in the areas where I envisioned them to fit. So I woke up this morning, and I literally had to do, like, I had to get like one of those programs, like a designer room program where I could put a, put in all the pieces of equipment and look at it, like visualize it. Even though I had kind of drawn one up, I needed it to be exact measurements because I'm kind of anal retentive. But I also needed to make sure that um, things were going to fit because I don't want to order the wrong things and not have them fit because it's super expensive to ship these things back and forth. So, yeah, I've been doing a lot of that kind of stuff. So, and when Iris gets home... I'm going to have to discuss a bunch of crap with her, which I'm not looking forward to, because I really just want to play Gears of War, because I was supposed to play Gears of War with my friends yesterday, and I didn't get to, because I didn't even get home until the butt crack is stupid, because I was out working on her stupid project, so tonight, god damn it, I want to play Gears with my friends, but I know Iris is going to be home in a little bit, and she's going to want to, like, blah, 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 talk my ear off about her fucking project. How long before you can talk about it? Probably, um... Probably not until Monday of next week is my guess because we have to get the website done before we make like an official announcement. Um, and there's some interpersonal drama that um, we are trying not to get into with some people, um, aka previous people. So we're trying to push it until until we can get through some of that and then um and then we'll announce uh the same one Eggert the same one not a new one uh did she light up more pallets for you to move yet no I am pretty sure we have all the pallets we need I just need to tear them apart I'm not looking forward to that I was kind of hoping she would do it but I don't really know when she's gonna have time um because one of the coaches uh remember that drama I was saying uh decided he wasn't gonna coach anymore until uh, her old gym closes. So she's been picking up extra classes where she's coaching. In fact, that's where she's at right now. That She's off. Um, she's coaching some extra classes. So, um, you know, I'm, she's going to be a little bit busier than normal. 
for the remainder of this month, I think. Um, so I have a feeling that uh, I'll be tearing apart the palettes. Larry in Florida wants to know what the palettes are for. Um, the palettes are for the lobby. Uh, we're going to make a um, an accent wall because uh, we're going with a very industrial theme uh, look in terms of the interior design. And so the palettes are going to be used to make a um, kind of a reclaimed wood looking accent wall. And that's a project that I am working on because I know how to do that kind of stuff. So that'll be cool. A lot of work, especially the tearing apart the, uh, the palettes. Is your brother helping with the design? No, he's got, uh, he's got other things right now that he has got to work on. Um, so he, I'm doing most of this stuff on my own, but luckily for me, I've learned a lot from him and I, and I have a pretty good idea of what's going to look good, what's not. Um, so yeah, someone asked if, if it was going to be inside or outside the home. No, the, the wall will be inside the lobby. Um, and I will be tearing the pallets apart outside of my house. I have to tear them apart. And then I'm actually going to stain them so that they all kind of have a uniformish look like a light stain on them. Um, and then I have to make sure I have enough to cover the wall. It's actually a lot of work. It's a lot of fucking work. And this is the shit I do for my wife. Would she do this shit for me? Hell no. Hell no, she would not do this for me. I can guarantee she would not ever work this hard for me. Not fucking ever. Uh, Walking Deb, the answer to your question is yes. Uh, yes, it is. Yes, it's a relaunch and a rebrand. Um, so there you go. All right, what else can I tell you? I think that's all I have to tell you. Uh, hope the drawer wall is strong enough to hold that. Actually, uh, I'm going to be... Do you want to know how I'm going to do it? The wall that it's going to be mounted on is actually a cinder block wall. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting in um, small beams that are anchored into the cinder block. Space, I haven't figured out exactly the spacing of them yet. Uh, probably like a foot and a half apart all along the wall. And then I'm going to attach it to that. Aren't you smart? Yes, I'd like to think I am. <laughs> I don't know that I am, but I'd like to think that I am. I try to think, uh, I try to make projects very practical and easy for myself, although this is not easy. Um, it's not incredibly difficult either. It just is time consuming more than anything. So come decorate my new house. Pay me. Actually, I know an amazing interior designer who's looking for a job. His name is Saban Patterson. He's living in Denver, Colorado right now. If anyone in Denver needs an interior designer, he is for hire. And he is exceptional. Um, so, you know, you could hire him. He's also looking for new friends in Denver because uh, he just moved there. He doesn't have any friends yet. Um, so I'm trying to hook him up with some friends to hang out with him. Hopefully some people will, um, some of my friends will actually call him and go hang out with him because he's kind of lonely. I feel sorry for him. Uh, okay, so that's it. I'm going to get off now. And by, not that way. Um, how's my wrist today? It still hurts. I've been wearing my handy dandy little whatever the fuck this thing is called. And um, it has helped. But it still hurts. It's still sore. Um, I mean, it doesn't feel like it's so bad. Like, I don't think my arm is falling off. Um, it just feels really, really sore. So I feel like because I have full function of my hand and my, even though it hurts to move my wrist and to bend my wrist, I still can do it. I feel like maybe I don't need to go to the doctor. I'm going to wait it out a little longer. If it continues to be horrible after a couple of days, I'm probably not going to have any choice but to go to the doctor, but I don't like going to the doctor. They always don't, first of all, it's super expensive. They're never nice to me. I hate going to the doctor. Do you know you can voice control your computer since there's since you said you're typing a lot lately? You know, I did know that, but I don't know how to do it. I'm kind of computer dumb. Sorry. Uh, have a good night. I missed your periscopes. Was uh, way on vacation. Well, guess what? You can watch all those periscopes um, after the fact. I actually posted them all up on my YouTube. So you can uh, go on YouTube and you can uh, watch those. Hi, Luke from Wisconsin. It kind of sucks, but it helps when your hands hurt. I will, I will try to figure out how to do it because that might help. Uh, okay. That's it. I'm going to call it a night so I can go play some gears. Uh, but I just want you guys to know, I love you. Thank you for tuning into my Periscope and I will try to yell at you or talk at you or share some stories with you tomorrow. In the meantime, have a great night. Kisses to my bitches. 
And uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye.